How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Virtual History 360. I'm Mr. Wade, and this is your yesterday's history for our North and South Unit Level 3. Now, Level 3 says I can identify the compromises that delayed the war. I'm talking about the Civil War, obviously. We're talking about the three big compromises, the Missouri Compromise, the Compromise of 1850, and the Kansas-Nebraska Act. Okay, so let's just break down those three compromises. First, we have the Missouri Compromise of 1820, which basically kept the tie between slave and free states in the Senate. All right, you need where there was 11 free states and 11 slave states, Missouri wanted to be admitted as a slave state. To keep that tie, the compromise was that Maine would be admitted at the same time so that the Senate would be balanced. And then they would draw a line that said no slavery north, slavery allowed south. That's going to come back in a big deal when we get to the Compromise of 1850. Okay. So what are we going to do with the new land? Divide it along the 3630 line of latitude. Okay. Then you get to the Compromise of 1850, which was what to do with the land we got from the Mexican War. Well, California had just discovered gold, the gold rush, the 49ers. Remember those guys, right? Well, everyone wanted California to become a state much faster than normal territories. But were they going to be a free state or a slave state? They wanted to be admitted as a free state. But here's the thing. Slave states said that would mess up the Missouri Compromise. So what did they do? They said California is a free state, but slavery cannot be forbidden in the other territories gained by Mexico. And then uh, there's the Fugitive Slave Law that came as a part, um, excuse me, the Fugitive Slave Act that was a part of this. You have the abolition of the slave trade in Washington, D.C. I got to speak carefully, make sure I say the right thing. Not slavery. But the slave trade was abolished in Washington, D.C. There was a lot that came about of the Compromise of 1850. All right. Then you have the Kansas-Nebraska Act. And this is Stephen A. Douglas saying, hey, what can we do to get that transcontinental railroad? Let's get it in the south or let's get it through Illinois, where his home state, excuse me. And there was argument. So that what about these new territories, Kansas and Nebraska? So he suggested the idea of popular sovereignty or the will of the people, popular sovereignty, the will of the people. Sounds good on paper. It let the people vote if they wanted to be a free state or a slave state. Yeah, election was a little rough, and we had the border ruffians, and you had the Jayhawkers coming in, and you had pro-slavery and anti-slavery people flooding into Kansas to try and sway the election. So what happens? We have the big event known as Bleeding Kansas. Okay, That's John Brown's first foray into our American history that we're going to be covering. <clears throat> But, yes, it was a very violent time in Kansas between the pro-slavery and anti-slavery. We'll leave it at that, okay? You also have Charles Sumner being beaten by Preston Brooks in the Senate. Can you imagine a sen one senator beating another senator? Crazy, huh? So, yeah, those are the three big compromises. So I'm going to ask, which compromise do you think had the biggest impact in delaying the Civil War? Okay? Not just biggest impact, but biggest impact in delaying the Civil War. Missouri? Compromise of 1850 or the Kansas Nebraska Act. That's your bell work. Go ahead and answer that. Be awesome. And for Virtual History 360, I'm Mr. Wade. I'll see you next time.